Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be showing you guys 15 tips and tricks that will make you a better hunter and fisherman, and this is important because this is a huge part of the game. Not only for free roam, but for completing challenges, for crafting, for completing rare items and accessories. Hunting and fishing is a massive part of the game, and there's a lot of little tips and tricks that can improve your experience, and that's what we're gonna be going over in this video today. So tip number one day, and this is something you should do before you really start hunting anything else, and that is kill the legendary buck. So the legendary buck is going to allow us to uh, craft the buck antler trinket. So by now I'm sure you guys know how to kill legendary animals or hunt them. It's pretty easy. You go to their last known location, you actually track some of the clues in their area, and then you kill them by any means necessary. And you don't even have to bring their goods to a trapper or anything like that. So why is the buck antler trinket so special? Because its effect will give you higher quality animal parts when skinning animals. So essentially what happens is a two-star animal has the chance to become a three-star animal. A poor pelt has the ability a poor pelt has the chance to become a good pelt, and a good pelt has the chance to become a perfect pelt. So if you don't get your kill just a hundred percent right, there's still a chance you could end up with a perfect pelt. And that trinket's effect lasts forever. So it's something you should get right away. And that works on every single animal as well. So that means no matter what you're doing, you're going to receive the effects of that. So get that trinket. The next trinket you need to get is the pronghorn trinket. Now for this, you're going to have to kill or hunt the legendary pronghorn. Now because the legendary pronghorn's location is in New Austin, this is something you'll likely only be able to do after the epilogue, but I'm sure you guys might find a glitch that allows you to get in there pretty easily. Now why is the pronghorn trinket so great? Well, it's because its effect will actually stop animals stored on your horse from spoiling. So if you put a carcass on the back of your horse, it will eventually spoil over time. This completely stops that from happening. Now you can have that carcass on the back of your horse for as long as you want. So those two trinkets right there are incredibly valuable because they provide some of the best hunting perks in the game and they will last with you forever. Up next, there's actually some hidden modifiers in game regarding the sell prices of animals. So parts from animals that are rare in a region. So for example, alligators in Valentine can be sold for 25% more than in a region where they're common. So that is pretty cool. If you happen to be skinning animals in, let's say, the swamp, you want to take them to the north or the west part of the map and vice versa because you'll be getting more money. Also, carcasses of skinned animals are worth 50% less than when the animals are unskinned, so keep that in mind. And if you own the special or ultimate edition of the game, you can sell animal parts for 10% more. So I know that's not a huge bump, but it's kind of an unsung perk or feature to owning the special or ultimate edition of the game. Let's talk about some locations now for hunting cougars. This apparently is a hot topic because it's one of the hardest animals in the game to capture, skin, and hunt. And the reason for that is cougars have a very special trait about them. You don't see them, they see you. So when they see you, they automatically engage in an attack mode. And cougars also come with this special insta-kill pounce that they can take you out with. So there's a couple of locations that work really well for finding cougars. One is in the very northeast part of the map, and one is in the northwestern part of the map. One's near Roanoke Ridge, and the other one is near Owengilla Falls and Owengilla Lake. So those two areas are both perfect. Now because of what I mentioned earlier with the cougars, how they see you and you don't see them, they're automatically going to go into attack mode. So if you find a higher elevated surface like a rock or a tree stump that you can get on, you can actually stop them from being able to insta-kill you, allowing you to have more time to set up a perfect shot to get their pelts. Another animal that will attack instantly and has that same insta-kill effect, that is the grizzly bear. And I think I found a location that works really well. It's this spot right here. 
It's sort of uh, just east of this cabin and northwest of Wallace Station. And you'll find a grizzly bear in this area 100% of the time. And just note that like the cougar, the grizzly bear will attack on sight and is going to be very lethal. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, well, how do I duplicate a grizzly bear or a cougar spawning? Because I, I might want more than one pelt or the one that attacked me was not a three-star bear or cougar, so I couldn't get a perfect pelt. Well, for that, what you're going to want to do is set up camp and then wait 24 hours. So sleep and then sleep again, at least until your clock hits over 24 hours later. Spawn in, and you should find a grizzly bear or a cougar in that exact same location, depending on what one you're looking for. Now let's talk about some other animals you might be hunting, specifically predators. There's two types of predators that will run away from you at all times. That is black bears and snakes. So you're never gonna have to worry about a black bear or a snake attacking you. They're always going to run away. Now on the off chance you do run into a snake, you could actually be poisoned. And if you're poisoned, your health core is going to drain from full to empty in 10 minutes. That is really quick. Now you can cure this pretty easily with ginseng, English mace, milkweed, vanilla flower, or yarrow, or the easiest thing to do is just sleep, return to camp, or start a mission, and the poison effect will be over. But just be careful, it is kind of shocking when you get like zapped by a snake in the grass. So just be careful about something like that. Now, getting back to predators, there's a couple of predators that will always go after you. So the opposite of what we see with the black bear and the snakes. And those three predators are the grizzly bears, which we saw earlier, wolves and mountain lions. They will always go after you. So something to keep in mind right there. Let's move on to some fishing tips. Something I learned is you can actually use your eagle eye with fishing, but you have to use it while the fishing rod is out. So this is something I just always assumed you could use no matter what. Turns out that's not true. So when your fishing rod is equipped and you use eagle eye, you'll see all the fish underwater, which could be great for trying to find a specific fish or just hunting a fish that might be in a specific location. Now, you'll notice as soon as you take the fishing rod away and try to use eagle eye, the fish do not appear. So that right there is a really useful tip. Super helpful if you're hunting these big fish, especially the legendary ones. You'll actually see them swimming underwater, which is so cool. This next tip doesn't have to do specifically with hunting, but let's just say it's not going to happen if you're eating at the saloon. So if your clothes get dirty, like if you dive in the mud or something like that, or you get tackled by a grizzly bear, let's just say, you can actually get clean clothes instantly just by going to your horse and swapping to a new outfit. You don't have to take a bath. You don't have to change your clothing or anything like that. You don't have to return to camp. It can be instantly done on your horse because I hate when I look dirty and filthy in game. I, I know it's cool, but uh, it just sort of takes away from the outfit a little bit. So you can instantly change that on your horse. Speaking of your horse, since we're on that subject, again, this is something that won't happen to it if it's hitched up at a post at a saloon. But if you're a dummy like me and always try and go off-roading and your horse accidentally takes a big tumble and ends up needing to be killed or revived, but you find that you don't have any revive on you, one way in which you can avoid having your horse be permanently lost is to close the game's application. But you have to do this very quickly. Now, the best scenario here would be just to have a revive and the second best scenario would be to have a recent save that didn't put you back too far but if you have neither of those closing your application on the game can save you it's kind of an emergency way to not lose your horse but again i wouldn't rely on it moving on if you've just hunted an animal you obviously know you're going to be leaving their carcass behind unless of course you take it well, that carcass can almost be used as an instant spawn location for that same type of animal. So it's the same thing. Once again, you want to kill an animal, and this especially works well if it's like a cougar or something like this, one that's a little bit harder to spawn. If you leave its carcass and then come back several days later, you're almost guaranteed to find that same animal where that carcass was. So mark it on the map. You're going to need to use your sleeping ability uh, for multiple different days here or just do something else and come back to that spot. And you should notice that in that, in that exact place, there will be an animal that you just ended up hunting. 
So that's something to keep in mind as well that like even though it's not technically bait because the carcass is gone, for whatever reason, that same animal that was just killed always likes to spawn where its fallen brother or sister was. If you guys are wondering why the legendary panther isn't spawning for you, even though you might know the location of it, which is at the real southern portion of the map, well, that's because you have to complete Master Hunter Challenge Rank 9 in order to get it unlocked. It is the final one in which you hunt. So the panther will not show up on the map until you've completed Master Hunter Challenge Rank 9. So again, just something to keep in mind. It might have been frustrating for people going to the location, but for whatever reason, they couldn't get it to spawn. And the final tip we're gonna be going over today, this one might have seemed obvious, but it's something that I didn't focus on all that much. If you happen to find an animal in the wild and would like to hunt them further in the future, Arthur or John will actually mark on the map where he's found that animal. So whether it's a cougar, grizzly bear, whether it's a fox, he'll mark on the map so you'll know exactly where to go if you wanna find that animal again. It makes hunting for stuff in the future a little bit easier. But anyways, that right there is 15 tips and tricks that will make you a better hunter and fisherman in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. If you have any other useful tips or tricks, please be sure to let us know down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.